Thank you very much for coming. Our plan today is to have one and a half hours of active dialogue with our distinguished speaker on creativity. All of you have the copies of the questions that I received from some of you. We realize that the time is very short to address all these questions and hence we request the speaker to select the questions that are pertinent to the subject of creativity within our time limitations. We hope that there may be some time for additional questions during the course of this dialogue. I have requested Dr. Carl Braithwaite, Francis Menlau, Raymond Rogers, and Frank Harlow to moderate this discussion. May I request you all to please listen with total attention during this dialogue and if you like to ask some questions, please be brief. The time, we have no time for long questions. Please be brief. Without taking any more precious time, I request the speaker to start this dialogue. Please. May I hear 15 questions? Which shall we take first? Shall we take the first one? What is meditation and what it, how is it related to creativity? Could we take that first? Meditation is a very complex business. This is a dialogue between us. As I said, it's a very complex business. The word meditation implies, both in Sanskrit and in English, not only brain concentrating on a certain subject, but also it implies a great deal of attention. But primarily, meditation means to, in Sanskrit, to measure. And also in English, etymologically, I believe, etymologically is to measure. The whole question of becoming is involved in it, which is to measure. I am this, I'll be that. I'll be, I am greedy, but I will gradually become non-greedy, which is a form of measurement, which is a form of becoming. Both becoming in the affairs of the world and psychologically becoming. That is the whole question of measurement. The Greeks, the ancient Greeks, 
were there. You know all about that, I don't have to go into it, were the originators of measurement. Without measurement, there would be no technology. And the Asiatics, especially in India, said measurement is illusion. Measurement means limitation. I'm translating. They didn't exactly say this, they put it differently. So, measurement means comparison, to compare what is, what should be. The ideal, the fact, the fact becoming the ideal. All that is implied in the meditation. And also in meditation is implied the meditator and the meditation. I don't feel if there's any difficulty in understanding what the speaker is saying, jump on him, please. <laughs> because it's a very complex business. And especially some of the Indian gurus have brought this world into America and made a lot of money out of it. They're multimillionaires. I met them. They're appalling beings. They're all out for money. So, to inquire into meditation, you have to inquire first, not only measurement, but also this constant becoming something psychologically. The human beings are violent, and the idea, the ideal to be in a state of non violence which is to become. So you set goals for your meditation? I'm saying what is implied in the whole structure and the nature of meditation. It's not how, how to meditate, but what is meditation rather than how. I hope I'm making myself clear. And also there is question involved in that. Who is meditating? And most of the systems of meditation, whether in the Japanese and the Hindus and so on, Tibetan, there is always the controller and the control. Right? Are we meeting each other? So there is the controller controlling thought, to quieten the thought, to, control, to shape thought according to a pur purposeful direction. So there is the controller and the control. Who is the controller? Please, all this is implied in meditation. Not merely to control one's thought, as it is generally understood in meditation, whether it is Zen meditation or the most very, very complex forms of meditation which take place in India and elsewhere, there is always the direct the entity that controls thought. So they have divided psychologically the thinker and the thought. So the thinker becomes or separates himself from the whole activity of thought. And therefore you meditation in meditation is implied the controller controlling thought, so as to make thought quiet. That is the essence of meditation, to bring about a state of brain 
I won't use the mind for the moment. The, to make the brain quiet. I'll explain it more and go into that. So, there is a division between the controller and the controlled. Right? Who is the controller? Very few people have asked that question. They're all delighted to meditate hoping to get somewhere. Illumination, enlightenment, and quietness of the brain, peace of mind, and so on. But there are never very, very few people who inquired, who is the controller? May we go on with that? The controller is also thought. Controller is the past. is the entity or the movement of time as the pass and measure. I don't remember. So there is the past, who is the thinker, separate from the thought, and the thinker tries to control thought. Like human beings have invented God. Sorry, if, I hope you don't mind. You won't be shocked if I go into all this. No, no. Go ahead. Human beings, out of their fear, invented God. And they try to reach God, which is the ultimate principle, as in India it's called Brahman is the ultimate principle. And meditation is to reach the ultimate. So it's, meditation is really very, very complex. It's not just merely meditating 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon, and 30, 20 minutes in the evening, which is taking a siesta, <laughs> not meditation at all. So, if one wants to discover what is meditation, one has to ask, why does one have to meditate? Right? One realizes one's brain is constantly chattering, constantly planning, designing what it will do, what it has done, the past, imp impinging itself on the present, its everlasting chattering, chattering, chattering. Whether a scientific chatter, sorry, <laughs> or the ordinary daily life chatter, like a housewife chattering, endlessly about something or other. So the brain is constantly in movement. Now, the, the idea of meditation is to make the brain quiet, silent, completely attentive, and in that attention find that which is Perhaps you would object to this word eternity, or something sacred. That is the intention of those who really have gone into this question. The speaker has gone into this for the last sixty years or more. He has discussed this question with Zen pundits, with Zen patriarchs, with the Hindus and Tibetan and all the rest of the gang. I hope you don't mind my talking colloquially, do you? <laughs> and the speaker refutes all that kind of meditation. 
Verse 2. Their idea of meditation is to achieve an end. The end being complete control of the brain so that there is no movement of thought. Because when the brain is still, deliberately disciplined, deliberately sought after, it is not silent. It is like it is like achieving something, which is the action of desire. I don't know if you follow this. May I go on? So one has to inquire also, if one is interested in all this, what is desire? Not suppress desire, as the monks and the, 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 the Indian sannyasis do, suppress desire or identify desire with something higher, higher principle, higher image, if you are a Christian with Christ and so on. So one has to understand, in, if one wants to find out what is meditation, one has to inquire into desire. All right, sir. Desire being the same as will? We we'll go into that in a minute. What is desire? Why man, human being, why I, a, a person, is so dominated by desire? Desire to become rich, desire to become, uh, you know, various forms of desire. We are slaves to desire, which is a reaction. So what is desire? This is part of meditation, you understand? This is what the speaker is saying about meditation. That is, unless one understands the movement of time, right? May I go into all this? Your interest in all this may go on? Please, yes. It's rather fun if we begin to go into it. But it was merely intellectual. Uh, excitement, it, no, it has no value. So one has to, <coughs> this very inquiry into what is meditation is part of meditation. You know? Is that my? So we are inquiring together. What is meditation? What is desire? Desire is. Perception, contact, sensation, right? The seeing something, a woman or a house or a garden or a lovely painting, seeing, coming into contact with it, touching it, from that arising sensation, then what takes place? You understand? Seeing, contact, sensation. That's, that's what actually takes place. When you go into a shop and see a shirt that you want to buy, you see it, touch it, feel it, sensation. Then what takes place? That, that is where the importance comes. Then thought, Give shape to sensation, which is taking. How would I look in that shirt? So there is seeing, contact, sensation, then thought, using the sensation as a means of. Self gratification, right? Is this so? 
Can there be a hiatus, a gap, between sensation, which is natural, healthy, unless one is paralyzed, of course, between that sensation and thought giving, coming and using it as a means of gratification? You know? Am I made this clear? Gratification meaning the desire to possess it? Desire to possess it? How would I look in it? Yeah. Yeah. No, would it be in relationship to myself. So I create, thought creates the image of you in that shirt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's desire. And the intensification of that desire is will. I must have that. So will is the actualization or, or the implementation of desire? Desire, yes. I I, please have this matter of dialogue, don't we? It's not a matter of accepting something. You don't mind if we speak out. Uh -huh. Good. <laughs> If this is clear, whether it's possible to keep a wide gap, as it were, between sensation, which is healthy and normal, and thought creating the image of you in the car, of you in the shirt, creating the image, which is the beginning of desire. I wonder if I'm right. So that is one part of meditation, to understand <coughs> the nature of desire, not to suppress it ever. I don't know if you understand. The discipline this requires, discipline in the sense, not conformity, but the discipline of understanding, the discipline of learning. So you might say to turn off desire, but really to more examine it and no, to be aware of this whole movement of desire. How desire arises and so on. But you're also saying to know it so well that that you are able to impose a gap and the next step does not necessarily follow. You to stop the step of implementation. If you do it as we are talking, as we are talking about, if you do it as actually, you will see what what goes on, which is seeing sensation contact, then thought giving an image to that sensation, and fulfilling that desire with all its complications, conflicts, and so on. So where there is a gap between sensation and thought creating the image, that is silence. I don't know if you follow all this. No, please, this, don't agree with me. This is fatal. <laughs> you make meditation sound like a very active enterprise, and I think we normally think of meditation or the uh, achieving a quiet mind as, as being an inactive sort of thing. So practice. You can take a drug to quieten the mind. You can concentrate. I won't go into that for a moment. You can do various forms and tricks to quieten the mind, quieten the brain. That's not. It's, it's a brain that isn't. That is dull. But a brain that has understood the implications and the complications of meditation has said it, the brain becomes an extraordinary instrument. So the quiet mind is not the empty mind. Oh, sir, emptiness. Well, this is the To have an empty mind means full of energy. Emptiness is energy. I won't Please, must go into step by step, otherwise... You don't mind, sir? No, not at all. 
So the quiet mind is perceiving things. It is receiving sensory information from outside, but it is not manipulating those things. Yes. So it also has to understand time. Not scientific time, in the sense of a series of moments. What is time? Not as a special subject studied by scientists or by others, but what is in our daily life time? Because we, unless we lay a foundation in our daily life, you understand, sir? That's firm, stable. Then meditation becomes a, 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 a form of illusory deception. So, and I must understand desire. There is the understanding of desire, and also understanding of time. What is time? Means to become. Be what, sir? Isn't time just a means to become something? Time is not only to become something. I am this. Give me time. I'll become that. I am violent. Give me time, space, and interval, so that I'll become a non-violent human being. That's part of time. And also time, in our daily life, is the accumulation of vast knowledge. Right? Time is also the future. So there is time. I hope I'm not... I'm not a specialist, please. Forgive me if I... If I'm not. Is time the perception of cause and effect? It is not that. Where there is a cause, the effect can be eradicated. So, the, what is the source of time? See, you as time as a human being, not I was, I am, I will be. Time is also a movement to achieve the ultimate. I have one life, the Holy Asiatics believe, I have one life, and if I die, I must have another life. It's called reincarnation, so that I'll, I'll become better and better and better and better, life after life, life after life, till I ultimately reach the highest principle, God, or whatever you like to call it. So that is part of time. I am this, but I will be that. Is, the, is becoming a deception? You understand, sir? Psychologically. I don't understand. Becoming a deception? Yes. An illusion, if you like to use a better word. I will have to work hard to understand that. There you go. Yes, sir. That's part of meditation, you see. You can, meditation is something extraordinary if you understand it. Yeah. The change seems so obvious. I mean, we see ourselves change. So how, how can you say it is becoming an illusion? I am greedy. Just to say, suppose I am greedy, and my tradition, religion, intelligence says, minimize the thing. <laughs> Don't be everlastingly greedy, silly. So, what has happened? I am, but I will be. 
You understand? I am violent, I will be non-violent. That is a movement in time. And in that movement I am still violent. I don't know if you understand. I'm making a he said dialogue between us, please. We cannot change. Just listen to what I have to say first. I am violent, and my tradition and all the people around me, environment tells me, and the religious books and so on, so on. Society tells me I must be non violent. But I am violent. So what happens? There is a conflict between what is and what should be. So does that, I see what you're so does that mean that if, if I'm violent and I want to make this change, this movement to non-violence, I'm making a violent act? If I'm greedy... There's no change at all. That which he is, he is just, you're jumping on me too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let's slowly go into it. It seems to me that there may be a change in degree. What's up? If you say that the movement is that you that there is no change at all, it seems to me that that denies the possibility of a change in degree. I'm going to just give me a chance, just a minute. I am violent. Human beings are violent. That's a historical fact. After 10,000 or 50,000 years, we are still violent human beings, derived from the animal and so on. I, the fact is I'm violent. That's a fact. The non-violence is non-fact. Right? It's an ideal, it's something. It's not. But this is a fact. But when I first Pursue non fact, you understand? It creates more problems. So there is conflict between the fact and the non fact. Right? So what is important to be free of violence, not achieve non violence? I don't know if you see that. So when I'm trying to achieve non violence, I am sowing the seeds of violence all the time till I reach that, which is a, which I call a deception, a delusion, an illusion. Right? I don't know if you follow. I don't see the difference between an absence of violence and non-violence. Of course, if I, to achieve non-violence is a deception, I said. So my problem then. Problem. Problem means something thrown at you. The word which logically means throw something thrown at you. Now, this is a question I have to resolve. Violence. What is violence? Not only physical damage to hurt somebody, it is also to get angry. Also to hate. Right? Violence is also conformity. Yes, sir. Is it <laughs> Listen. <laughs> violence is also conformity. And violence is a vocation of imitation. I know it goes against all. So I have to understand violence. Why, why am I? Why is there violence? Because I'm conforming, imitating, angry, jealousy, and I'm aware of the whole structure of violence. Right? Aware, and give. Complete attention to that. When you give complete attention to that, it's like a like a flame burning out the violence. I don't know if you understand. 
So, as scientists, you give complete attention to something, and you find an answer to it. Right? It's only inattention that creates the problem. I don't have to follow all this. Sir, if I give complete attention to sensation, will I burn out desire? Yes, sir. And, and that's a copy, of course. Not burn out. That's a, you see, we are. What is? I will explain what. It, if you agree to that, if you see the logic of it, then desire. What is? Why have we give such extraordinary importance to desire? The whole American public is told, told fulfill. Right? Don't inhibit. That's terrible. Don't control. Let go. Do what you like. And you are creating such havoc in the world. That's a that's a different matter. So when there is complete attention. Which means give your total energy to, to that fact of violence. That energy dis dissipates violence. Whole of it, not part of it. You understand? What I mean? That's also meditation. Uh, it seems to me that there has to be uh, another uh, another um, objective. The. You surely would not advocate that the sole objective of meditation be to achieve non-violence. There must, in, in addition, be... I mean, that's negative. Yes. I mean, I mean, you must seek something else. What yeah, else do you seek? You understood himself? Yes, he, he said... Yeah, you have to talk louder. I, I say, <clears throat> it seems to me that, uh, that you are, have discussed one, or, or have mentioned one objective, to achieve non-violence. That is an example, yeah, but if, I, However, it is confusing me. If you give complete attention to achieving the, to, to violence in order to find non-violence... I am not doing that. I want to understand the nature of violence. As you are, want to understand the nature of atom, <laughs> you have given your whole attention to the blasted thing. Of course, you've studied it, you went into it, you have broke it up, Einstein and Oppenheimer and all the rest of them. Excuse me, I, I, I think that, uh, that there's uh, something that's really puzzling me. This whole concept of giving complete attention to anything um, is, to me, something which is almost inconceivable. And I, I would disagree that we have given our attention... What do you mean inconceivable, sir? I don't know what you mean. What is the difference between attention and inattention? We are, if you are disciplined along a certain line, you give a great deal of attention to that. The rest of the time you are inattentive. Right? This is a fact, no natural human fact. If I'm terribly interested in something, I give my attention to it. The rest of the time, I'm not attentive. But you're giving attention to more than one thing at, at different intervals. Yeah. You may be giving attention to many different things. So attention matters, not to different things. Is the attention itself? Huh? Is the attention itself that matters? Of course. Rather than what you are putting the attention on. The moment or it is. <laughs> but it's the notion of complete attention. Uh, all right, let's forget the word complete. <laughs> attention means complete. <laughs> okay. So that's. And also, 
one has to understand oneself. Right, sir? This is the importance of meditation. Time, desire, all the things I am. What am I? If I don't understand myself, I may be deceiving myself all the time. I know, I used to know a friend, he's an Indian, highly educated, been to Cambridge in England, and had a good position in India, and he became a judge. One morning he woke up and said, I passed judgment on these people. What is truth? And it's part of the Indian tradition, especially among the Brahmins, to leave the family and all that and find out through meditation what truth was. Because he said that. You're following what I'm So he went into the forest and all that, and for 25 years he meditated to find out what truth was. So somebody brought him to one of the speaker's talk, and he came, came to see after the speaker, and he said, look, for 25 years I've been deceiving myself. You understand, sir? You understand what I'm saying? Think of the courage of that man, etc. So we talked about a great deal. Now, unless I understand myself, what is the self, the ego, the person, persona, the ethos, and so on, I, I may meditate for the rest of my life and maybe deceiving myself, you understand? I may be living in a vast series of illusions, thinking those are real. So I must understand myself. Therefore, it mu I, under I can understand myself not according to some psychologist, some Freud or all the rest of it. I must understand myself, not through somebody. You understand me? You can never be sure that you're not deluding yourself. I'm going to try, sir. <laughs> if one thing, right? I must know myself, not according to any philosophy, according to any scientist, according to any psychiatry, and so on. Not according to any system. I am understanding the system, not myself. See the difference? So I must under Now, how do I understand myself? Without any deception, otherwise I've played a wrong game. At the end of it, I am deceiving myself. So how do I learn to understand myself so completely? So that there is not a shadow of doubt, and not a shadow of deception, self-illusion. Is that all right, may I go on? He said, dialogue, please. I'm not just feeling. How how what do you do with feeling in that? I was feeling for oh. Isn't it? If I feel, I recognize the feeling. Leave that for the moment, sir. So do we come back again to attention in no, terms sir. of understanding myself? No. I'm going to show you. Just give me again. You're too quick. Just to... I want to understand myself. And I must understand myself so thoroughly that there is not a slightest deception. Tremendous integrity and honesty, right? Otherwise, there's no point. Can you go along with this? Honesty and integrity. So how do I, I realize that there must be honesty, integrity, and especially skepticism. 
in the Christian world, the, the whole Christian Christianity is based on the Bible, on your Saviour and so on. And Christianity doesn't allow any doubt, right? The religious Christian, any doubt, any scepticism. If there was scepticism and doubt, the whole thing would, would collapse. When we were in Italy, I know Italian somewhat, and I heard the Pope say, he was preaching something like that, said, you must have more faith. And a friend of mine who was sitting with next to me said, look, this is what they are doing, cultivating faith to destroy any kind of inquiry. That's now. So, tremendous honesty, which is very difficult, sir, and great integrity. But another definition of faith in the Christian religion is trust. Another definition of faith in Christianity is trust. So it's not a matter of destroying inquiry only, but having trust. Love, he says another, another matter is trust. Trust. This is what he says. Trust in the home. Do you trust? Do you trust your wife? Do you trust your husband? Do you trust your president? Why do you trust? What do you mean to trust him? If, you're, if there is doubt, you are inquiring. You are asking, demanding. But you can trust him and still inquire about the nature of God. So trust means what? I trust, if I have a wife, I trust her because I love her. I know she won't do anything ugly to me, and I know I won't do anything ugly to her, because I love her. Where there is love, there is trust. You don't, you don't tr trust by itself, it means nothing. I won't go in. Please, let's come back to this. So I must know myself. Without knowing myself, deception of every kind is possible. Right, sir? You agree to that? Honesty, integrity, and a scepticism, doubt. And that doubt must be kept on a leash. Well, you know what a leash? A dog kept on a leash. It must, occasionally, the dog must be free of the leash so that it can run. But if you keep him all the time on the leash, it's no longer, it has vitality, it isn't a dog anymore. So we must have that quality. Right. Now, how do I understand myself? This is part of meditation, you understand, sir? I understand myself through my relationship to the environment, to my wife, to my father, to my... and all that. In my relationship I see my reactions. Right, so we're following it. Is that all right so far? Do you approve? <laughs> because rela without relationship I don't exist. I cannot exist. I may withdraw into a monastery, but it's still I'm related. Related to the past, related to a concept of what Jesus and so on. So I'm always related. Right? In that relationship, which is a mirror, I see myself as I am. Not as I should be, but actually what I am. In terms of reactions? Yeah, all my reactions. So that requires an extraordinary watchfulness, right? I wonder if you can do all this. 
So, in relationship, relationship is the mirror in which I see myself as I am, which is far more important than what I should be, because what I am can be transformed. Uh, not transformed. That word transform means moving from one form to another form. But bring about a mutation, I use that word. So that is the mirror. So I'm watching the mirror in my relationship. The mirror is my relationship. So I see that I'm creating an image about people all the time. Right? I've created an image about my wife. I've lived with her for 40, 20, 10 days. I've already created an image about her. And she has already created an image about me. Right? So this is fact. So our relationship is between these two images. Right? Right? Kali, you. <laughs> Are you nervous if I say all this? No, no. Your wife here too? <laughs> <laughs> if one measures oneself against the mirror of society. I. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I may not have put that quite the way you would have done. But the focus of my question is, what happens to one's self-image if one changes the society? Now, just a minute. Who created the society? We created the society. We are aggressive. We are violent. We are greedy. We are that. Our society is ourselves. Society is not different from me. Well, if we move, I'm not a communist. <laughs> if we move from one society to another, it's the same. It's like my becoming. I'm a Catholic and I become a Buddhist. It is the same movement. I've changed the name, but in Buddhism is much more intellectual, much more subtle, much more etc. etc. Than than. Christianity. So, moving from one religion or one state to another is the same. I am question. Please, I am saying, religion. Um, the, to understand oneself, one has to see what our relationship is. What one's relationship is to nature. the trees, the words, the world of nature, the reality of nature, the beauty, the depth and the glory of nature. And also the society. I am related to society. And I say I am different from society. I say we are not. We have created this society. Right? That's a fact, sir, you did. Let me finish this. You, I'll, one moment, um, just a minute, please. We have created this society. Thought has created this society. The culture of a particular society. We are the result of all that. It's our action that has created this society. We are greedy, we are aggressive, we are violent, we are possessive, uncertain, wanting security, physical as well as psychological. So we have this society, which is corrupt, as we are corrupt. Sorry, you may all not be. It's our product. So unless I, part of this society, 
change radically psychologically, there will be no change in society. That's a fact. The communists, if they use that word, may I? I used to have a lot of communist friends at one time. Card, card carrying communists. Not easy chair communists. <laughs> they are real communists. And they would discuss, we would discuss a great deal in Paris and other places. And they would go up to a certain point and they decide we won't go. Marx is the limit. You understand? Like the fundamentalists in this country, the Bible is the limit. We can't discuss the film. So, we are discussing meditation. And in that meditation, what is creativity? That's the question. Now, in relationship, I see myself as I am. And also, I see any movement to change what I am. Please understand this little bit complex, don't mind. Any movement to change what I am is still in the same pattern. Uh, right? This is, I am. All right, let me put it differently. Who is it that is to change it? Right? I am greedy. Metton. I'm, suppose I am greedy. How? In what manner do I change it? To change means to something else. Right? What is, right? So, so wanting to not be greedy is another form no. of greed? Yes, sir, that is true. Not wanting to be greedy is another form of greed, of course. So, how, do, how does that fact change? I discover in my relationship how greedy I am, how possessive I am sexually, and all the rest of it, the attachment, with all its complexity of attachment, fear, love, jealousy, anxiety, hate, right in that world. All this is contained. Am I going all right, sirs? You are following all the, am I, we are together in this or are we just talking to myself? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you have indicated that watchfulness is needed to see these things. Of course I will. But but it how can we help the watchfulness to be strong enough to see. I will confess. I will go. Sir, why are you scientists? You want to be there. You spend years, I don't know how many years you spend to become a scientist. And you won't even give five minutes to this. I think to ask, if I may most respectfully point out, to ask how is to ask a system, right? And system inevitably has destructive quality inherent in it, entropy and all the rest of it. So, in my relationship I discover myself, right? And then next question is, what is attention and what is concentration? You are following all this, does it interest you all this? Don't be polite, you know, I don't care if you <laughs> go. Could, could we back up just one notch you were, you were talking about? The greed and various things like this and trying to change them, is, is that in the context of changing the sensation or changing the fulfillment of it? You say you're greedy 
Do you mean you have the sensations of... Well, it's your dream. Or it, you it looks like you can eliminate the fulfillment but still have the feeling. No. So that's a difficult What is the feeling of dream? Possession. Right? You have a marvelous house, I want that kind of house too. Okay, that's the sensation so, then. Huh? That's the sensation you want. Yes, want. It's when you go out and get it. Yes. Something else. Here in America, that's Bye, 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 bye. Go for the gusto. Yes. <laughs> Then I have to go into the question of concentration and attention. What is concentration? Concentration implies exclusion, doesn't huh? it? Doesn't concentration imply exclusion, excluding? Concentration. Look at it carefully. Let's look at it. Concentrate. You, in a school, the child is told from the teacher to concentrate. Don't let your thoughts run away, we don't look out of the window, constantly, you follow? So we are trained from childhood. If you are a religious Christian, you focus on Jesus or Christ or whatever it is. If you are an Indian, you do it on the same thing with a different name. We are slave to names, right, sir? So, concentration implies exclusion. I'm concentrated, but thoughts keep on wandering. So I have to control it. Right? Right, sir? And then, question I who is the controller? The controller is the controlled. I wonder if you see that. Right, sir? Control, you mean controlled by his desire to control? No, sir, no, sir. The observer is the observed. One thing I, I feel compelled to offer as a Christian, you mentioned that Christians concentrate on Christ. Sir, what? You, you mentioned that Christians concentrate on Christ. And although I, I attempt to be a Christian, I'm not a perfect one, certainly. But one belief in Christianity is that one not focus on an individual. And one thing that separates Christianity from other religions is that it is more altruistic. Instead of focusing on the self, in Christianity we focus more, outwardly, more sacrifice altruistic. self for others. More altruistic, as you put it. So that the others say, love you, sorry, see, don't. So I don't think there becomes a focus on that individual. Yeah, I'm sorry, I meant Ideally, let's there's leave a spread that. of feeling for all of humanity. So let's leave out altruistic. Mm -hmm. and trying to find out what is meditation and creativity for the moment. We can talk about the various forms of religions. They are put together by thought. There is no question about that. All the rituals, all the dogmas, all the beliefs and all that is put together by thought. Maybe I was making myself clear. Let's, let's, let's not get into the religion, please. I wasn't trying to defend a plan. No, let's, let's stick with the subject, okay? Sure. I, all right right I'm now. This relates to the subject. Okay. I'd like to know. I'm no, so, let's, let's stick to it so. right now. Forgive okay? me. I'd like to okay. know what is the difference between self and, 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 and reflection. I think you're curious. Yours, what's you're going done. on next? Forgive me if I've brought in Christ. So we are talking about uh, concentration. Concentration implies focusing your energy on a particular subject, which is thought trying to concentrate on something. But thought is also vagrant, all the time wandering off. So there is conflict in that, right? <coughs> Back and forth. So when I had to understand, please, if you are really interested in all this, what is conflict? Why have human beings lived after so many thousands of years perpetually in conflict? It seems normal 
and you say, yes, it's necessary to be in conflict, to progress. What is progression? What is, are, you, are we progressing? Perhaps technologically, amazingly, you are progressing. Otherwise, are we progressing psychologically? Obviously not. We are what we have been for the last 40,000 years or more. So, so I have to understand what is concentration, which means exclusion, which means I live my life excluding everything, avoiding everything, resisting everything. You follow me? So there is constant battle. And a brain in conflict wears itself out, loses its energy. Right? Agree to This is so obvious, logical. So is it possible to live without conflict? You understand, sir? You understand the depth of meditation, what's implied? So is it possible to live without conflict? Speaker says yes. Speaker says, if I'm not boasting, I, he's not boasting or trying to be an example, he's a horror for all that kind of stuff. He says yes, it's, it's possible, you have done it. What is conflict? Why is there? Duality in us, you understand? Saying one thing and doing something else, contrary to what you have said. And I am greedy, I must not, which is a contradiction. Right? Agree, sir? So in us there is duality all the time functioning. So duality is the cause of conflict. What is, is it possible, is there, no, sorry, is there duality at all? There's duality in the Just listen, one moment, please. We have to stop it. Is it, is there duality at all? There is duality, you're a woman, I'm a man. You're, I am tall, you are short, or you are tall, I am short. I'm, you are fair, I am dark, and so on. There is duality. There is sun rising, sun setting, darkness, light. There is contradiction, there is duality. But psychologically, is there duality at all? Or only what is? You understand, sir? There is only violence, not the opposite of it. The opposite of it is not real. But we have made the, the opposite real. And hence there is duality. I don't know if you are following all this. Am I Heaven and hell, devil and God, you know, it's the whole psychological movement of duality I'm discussing. And I, we are saying, the speaker is saying, there is no duality psychologically. There is only what is. And if the understanding of what is, then there is no duality. You know? And therefore, there is a cessation of all conflict psychologically. Because meditation implies tremendous energy required, not just sitting in some silly corner repeating something like that. There's a lovely story <coughs> of a patriarch, wise and all that kind of thing, and a disciple comes to him <coughs> and sits cross-legged in front of him, closes his eyes. And the prophet 
in the battery house, say, my friend, what are you doing? I'm meditating, sir. He said, oh, is that so? So he picks up two stones and keeps on, Patria picks up two stones and rubs them together. The noise wakes him up and says, the disciple says to him, Sir, what are you doing? I'm trying to make a mirror out of these two stones. And the disciple says, Sir, you can rub for the rest of your life, you'll never make a stone. And so the patriarch says, you can sit like that for the rest, for the rest of your life. <clears throat> so, concentration. Then what is attention? In concentration, there is always a centre, right? The centre is the me. Me concentrating. I don't know if you follow all this. Concentration emphasizes the me, the self. I know this is. And attention has no center whatever. When I'm attending, I'm attending. There is attention. It's not I am attending. I don't see this. this is. So in attention, in where there is attention, the centre, the with its periphery, with its diameter, with its extension and so on, there is none of that. And out of that, we have to inquire what is a silent mind, brain? And we've laid the foundation, that is, to understand oneself so completely there is no fear, psychologically, no fear, whatever. Otherwise fear will create all kinds of illusions. You've talked about the mind and the brain, and you've made very careful distinctions between them I as you talked about that. I'm coming to that, sir. I'm taking a breather, sir. Sorry. Where there is attention, there is silence. But that silence is like a flame. You understand? Alive, burning. Not burning anything away. Not, it's like a, you understand, like the sun, etc. So, attention means complete cessation of the self. And if you try, when you are attending, you've forgotten yourself, there is no self. Only the self exists only when there is inattention, when there is no attention. Attention. I don't know. Not sex, not pleasure, not desire, which Americans have reduced to sex and pleasure and all that. So, attention means silence, and in that, that silence is love. Without love, there is nothing. So, then one asks, is there anything sacred which thought has not touched at all? You understand? Is all 
life a material process. I don't know anything about God. I'm not going to invent God. You understand? When there's no fear, there's no invention for God. The origin of things. We'll find out the origin of things when there is absolutely no fear and the desire for any comfort, security. Right? Because they're all little use, you understand? So, when the brain is completely silent and has that extraordinary energy, you understand? Because it has now stopped chattering. I don't know if you follow all this. Stop chattering. Please, this is all logical, sane, rational. This is not some exotic Indian rubbish. <laughs> I was brought up when I left India at the age of nine. I haven't read any speaker, I haven't read any single religious book or any philosophy or any psychology. You may say you are a peculiar freak. Probably no. <laughs> a biological freak, I'm not. So where the brain is absolutely quiet and therefore empty of images, you understand? And it has got that energy. Hmm? And is there anything sacred? Which means, is there anything that thought, man, in his endeavour, in his search, in his conflict, in his suffering, hopes for something. You understand? You understand all this? Sir? Then if he hopes, then he'll create. Then he will project out of his hope something which he immensely wants. So that is a deception. All this implies an insight. Insight is not the result of remembrance. If it is a f based on remembrance, it is just another continuity of memory, thought. So, insight is unrelated to thought, memory, experience and time. Something you, in a flash, you see the whole thing. This happens to all of your scientists, sciences, that insight is partial. Forgive me for saying so. Like an artist, it's partial. We are talking of insight as a holistic movement. These are not words, please. To me they are not, yeah. So, is there something that is beyond time, beyond measure, beyond all man's urges, desires and so on? If one finds that, life has a tremendous meaning. Right, sir? Uh, the speaker says there is, and I, I can't prove it on the side. Now this is meditation, and out of that is creation. Love, compassion has its own intelligence. And that compassion, love and intelligence is creativity. Because its it, creativity does not bring about destruction on the one side, building on the other. I don't know if I make myself clear.
And there's the last question. <laughs> if you were a director of the library <laughs> with the responsibility for the defense of the country and recognizing the way things are, how would you direct the activity of the <laughs> laboratories and research? Thank God I'm not. <laughs> but if I am, would I put this question? Is the question a right question? Sir, it's a question trying to trying to find a a connection. Between your your theories, your your beliefs of mankind and what we're all trying to do, and the practical everyday problems that yes, sir. everyday problems which are earning a livelihood, sex, having children or not having children, vocation which is now becoming imitation, everyday problems of quarrels, disagreements, pain, hurts, suffering. You see our daily existence. And our brains are trained from childhood to, so to solve problems. And we are saying, solution prevents the understanding of the problem. Seeking a solution prevents the understanding of a problem. Sorry, it is. Because our brains are trained to solutions. I have a problem with my wife. And I would say, what is the solution? Divorce, or go to a lawyer, or the adjustment, or run away, I don't know all that kind of stuff. But the problem is what? My assertions, my wishes, my fulfillment, and hers. Let's understand that, discuss it, finish with it. But if I'm seeking a solution, I never go into the question. The causation of a problem can be ended not through a solution, but the understanding of the problem itself. I, this is, sorry, this is great job. So if well, the question is, if I'm a director, you're asking, sir, the answer, I say, is a wrong question, because this should have been put right at the beginning, not now. at the beginning of killing man, uh, one human being killing another human being in the name of religion, in the name of country, in the name of God, in the name of crown and loyalty, my country opposed to your country, my ideology opposed to your ideology. I'm a devout Marxist, I'm not, but Leninist, and another is Catholic, and so we are at war with each other. That is the real question, not at the end of all this, what should I do? We have brought about this. We have divided the world. You are a Christian, I am a black, you are white, you are a Caucasian, and I am Chinese, or whatever the beastly thing is. We have divided, dis fought each other from the beginning of time. And the Western civilization 
has killed more people than ever any other civilization. This is a fact. I'm not against it or for it. Sir, a group of people like you in Los Alamos, you have given your time for destruction and also for construction, do other things. using sun rays, you know, all that. You are doing benefit on one side, a great deal of benefit. On the other side, you are destroying every human being on Earth. Because you have recognized my country, my responsibility, my defense, and the Russians are saying exactly the same thing on the other side. India is saying the same thing, which has immense poverty. Building up armaments. So, what is the answer to this? The answer to that, sir, for me, I may be wrong, subject to your correction. As a group of people who have gathered together in Los Alamos for one purpose. And if another, if a group who says, look, let's forget all nationalism, all religions, all, let us as human beings solve this problem, how to live together without destruction, if we gave, gave time to all that, a group of dedicated, absolutely persons who are concerned with, with all the things we have been talking about, then perhaps there is something new can take place. So we have never faced death. Oppenheimer, he knew Sanskrit, he said, I am become death. You know that very well. And we don't understand death either, which, would, which I haven't time to go into now. But we have become destroyers and also benefit human beings at the same time. Right, sir? I can't, please. I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm not. A, propagandist. But the world is like this now. Nobody is thinking about a global outlook, a global feeling for all humanity, not my country, for God's sake. So if you went around the world as the speaker does, you would cry for the rest of your life. Passivism is a reaction to militarism. That's all. I'm not a the speaker is not a pacifist. He says, let's look at the cause of all this, the beginning of all this. And if the causation is there, if we all see together the causation, then the thing is solved. But each one says, has different opinions about the causation, and sticks to the, his opinions, his historical dialectalism. So, sir, there it is. Sir, if I may ask, I think you have convinced us, and you can... I'm not convincing anything. I'm not using the proper word. 
uh, I think you have seen from the silence of the audience that we seem to have enough energy to understand and appreciate the problem. Don't stop. Don't say it. It's not good. <laughs> so what I mean is, once we really try to understand this and do something in that direction, somehow we seem to lack the necessary energy. So with the result, we are still not able to make as much progress as we all like, but is there a, is, I would like to hear a few comments from you. What is it that is really holding us? We can see it, and we can see the house on the fire, but still, we, cannot, we are not able to do anything about stopping the fire. The house on fire, we think it's out there, it's in here. We have to put our house in order first, so Sorry, we've talked. They're looking at the clock. Sir? Sir, I saw one sense called by a family whom I've known for some time. His son came to see me and said, My father is dying. Will you please come and see him? And you know, in all families, what takes place? Father is dying, and they all surround him crying. You know. So I asked the father to chase them out of the room. So he said, You asked them to get him. He made the javelin, and they all left, and he locked the door. And he said, I'm dying of disease, incurable, and I'm frightened. Do you understand? So I sat with him, and he held his hand. And he said, it's the first time somebody had held my hand. You understand so much? And I said, and the speaker said to him, let's die together. Which means what? He was leaving all his family, he had a lovely house, very rich man. And he said, you are leaving all that. That's what you are afraid of. And also you are afraid of the unknown. And you are attached. Where there is attachment, there is fear. Right? And so on. We will talk gently together. And I said, there is any kind of attachment to me, I will die with you, if you die, if you are free of attachment. You understand what I'm saying, sir? So death has an extraordinary meaning in life. To live with death, not separate death there and living here, together. I think so. Thank you very much.